Hi, my name is Kevin O'Leary. I'm the UX lead on Spark at Acquia. What I want to show you today is some of the work that we've been doing on Edit in Place. Basically, the goal here is to try to bring together uh, work that we've been doing in Edit Module uh, for editing the fields in a node with work that already existed in, in Drupal 7, such as the contextual gears and uh, local task tabs. The three of these things kind of presented different ways of working with things that are right on the front end of your site, but they offered three different interaction patterns to do that. So our goal here is to try to bring those three things together into a more unified uh, interaction pattern for the user to be able to deal with anything that's right in place on the front end of their site. So there's basically four parts to this problem. Um, first off, the conflicting patterns in the different UIs here are confusing the users. Uh, the second is that the tasks in themselves aren't intuitive enough. Um, the third is that there's unnecessary information in all of these forms that's slowing the user down. And then the last is that the interaction patterns uh, don't really work for tablet devices. Let me just give you a quick overview of how it works right now in Drupal 8. This is a promoted node that's on the home page. Um, and I see that I have a, a contextual gear here so that I have some operations that I can perform. I can edit or delete. Uh, but then I also have this edit up here. So right off the bat, we have two sort of different ways of accessing this content. Mm -hmm. The edit from the contextual gear brings me to the full node edit form in the overlay. The edit tab brings me into edit mode, and then I can click into the various fields. So once I actually click through and I'm actually looking at the node itself, now I see yet another interaction pattern here, which is I have this edit tab which again brings me to the full node edit form in the overlay. Um, and then I again also still have the edit tab from edit module. So what you're looking at is the new design that we've been working on uh, for this unified interaction pattern. And uh, you can see up here on the top you have this um, pencil icon. And this is the toggle for edit mode. So when we toggle on the edit mode, you can see that there's uh, a number of pencil icons all across uh, the site, which are the affordances for things that can be edited. So instead of having uh, your local task tabs and the and the gears with the drop down for for blocks, and then uh, the edit tab at the top for toggling on and off edit mode, everything is 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 done with the same affordance. So if I want to edit this menu here, I simply click on that and now I can see some options of things that I can do. Or if I want to edit this block, uh, I can edit that. Or if I want to edit um, one of the fields of the node, like the title field or the body field, I simply click on those things and edit them directly. So I'm back in the D8 install now and I'm going to show you how I would add a menu link. So I have a menu over here, user account menu. Um, and I click uh, list links and um, now I can see that in the overlay I have an add link button up here. Uh, so if I add a link, uh, now I'm in the add link form. And this is a fairly complex form, simple for Drupal, but I think for, for, for an average user a fairly complex form. There are, actually about 155 words on this page and eight form elements. So that's quite a lot for the user to grok. And users usually feel as if they should read through all of this or at least skim through it uh, in case they might be doing something wrong. So um, I would add a, a menu link title. I've created a node before uh, uh, that, I, that I've called stunning typography. But now when I get to the path field here, um, there's a problem because I don't know the path. Um, and I may not even know what a path is. Uh, I have some descriptive text down here that I can read to sort of describe that to me. But what would really be great here is if I had an autocomplete function so I could start typing something and it would, uh, it would, it would bring that up. So since I don't know the path, I'm going to need to go and find the path. So I have to close the overlay, go to menu, I have to know that my uh, paths would be found by going to the actual content. I can see going to the content that I have this node. And now I can click on the node itself. Again, I would need to know this. Um, and then find the node path 
up here, which is node 6. So I copy node 6, and now I go back to list links, add link, and then paste node 6. So that's a pretty roundabout way for me to get to here. And then if I save, I'm put back into the list links UI, and the user is going to save that configuration because the expectation of the user is that if I'm in a modal, I need to save it or else my changes are going to be lost. And now I go and I close it, and I see that my link has been added. So let's have a look at this same task in the new design. I go to the edit toggle, I toggle it on, um, and let's take this menu right here, the main menu. Say I wanted to add a link to this menu, I simply click on the uh, on the edit affordance and I see add link right there so I can click that and now uh, I get a modal and this modal gives me the opportunity to um, give the link a title and then an autocomplete field where I can see some human readable names of pages in my site and then I can click one and it's going to automatically put in the path uh, if I already knew the path I could have just typed it in here and just completely ignored this middle field uh, and then I can submit that and the link is added. So let me talk just a little bit about the touch affordances that we've um, employed here in this in this design. Um, when you have the edit mode toggled on uh, and you go to a block you can see that uh, you know rather than the drop down we have this sort of bar of buttons and the sizes and shapes of these buttons are optimized specifically for touch devices a design which is going to enable us to have them, you know, not interfere with the content that's here uh, and yet present all of the things that the user is going to need. Um, and then we've introduced some interesting new little patterns like these up down arrows, which simply uh, change the weight of the block to move it up uh, above this block above it or down below the other block here. So just to review. We started out with conflicting patterns that confuse the user by giving them uh, two different ways to do essentially the same thing. And we've unified that into a single interaction pattern for editing anything that you can see on a site page. Second, we simplified the interaction pattern so that the user can quickly get to the thing they want to edit, edit it, and then return to the site page that they're working on. Third, we streamlined the whole process by simplifying the form and hiding all but the most essential fields that the user needs to perform the task. And last, we optimized the whole experience for touch devices by removing hover, uh, adding the toggle so that all of the affordances for editables appear at once, and uh, increasing the size of the touch zones for all of the actual contextual links themselves. So these designs have already been through several rounds of testing, and so far the test results have been really positive. We've found that uh, current Drupal users uh, find this to be a much more intuitive experience for editing than they're used to in Drupal, and non-Drupal users have found it to be comparable to uh, other apps that they use on touch devices. So uh, we're going to continue to test, but uh, we'd also like people in the community to uh, have a look at the prototype which will be available online, and uh, also test it and give us your feedback as we move to uh, getting this implemented.